Just like with arrays, where we could nest an array inside of an array, we can do the same thing for objects. We can fill objects with keys that are arrays, or also keys that are other objects. And we do this all the time, because most of the data we work with in the real world is generally a combination of list or ordered data, as well as key value pairs of data. So here are a couple of examples. I have an object called student. And a student has a first name, a last name, key. We have a strengths property, which is set to an array. And then we have an exams key, and the value is another object. So we have the midterm score and the final score. Two different exams, and we could play around with this. Uh, here's a quick little quiz. How would I access, how would I add together midterm and final, and then divide them by two? How would I find the average? You don't have to use some fancy shortcut to average things, but just access this number access this number and add them together and divide by two. So here's how I would do it. Student dot exams dot midterm plus student dot exams dot final. And that will give us the combination. So we'll just call this, uh, well, well, we'll go with average and then surround them with parentheses because we want to make sure we add them before we divide by two. Add in our equal sign, let's refresh and see what average looks like. 90, and that seems right. So we're using the dot notation multiple times. We chain them together. First to get exams, then to get midterm. If we wanted to access art, it would be student dot strength and then square bracket one because it's index of one. And we could keep nesting as far as we wanted to, on and on and on. Another really common format is where we have an array, and each element in the array is an object. So we get the order where we have the top level array, but rather than just storing a string or a number, we can store a bunch of information together as an object. So this would represent a simple shopping cart for some sort of e-commerce checkout, where you have a product with a name, a price, and a quantity for each element in that array. So there is an order. Most carts have an order. The thing that was added first is up top. The thing that was most recently added is down at the bottom. It displays the price, the quantity. We could easily multiply price times quantity for each element, especially once we talk about loops. And then you could print that out and then total it all up and have one subtotal. So this pattern you'll see all over the place as well, an array of objects. Here's one more example. Remember when we talked about arrays and we saw multi-dimensional arrays where we were representing a game board like for tic-tac-toe and each row is represented by its own nested array. So we would have three rows. I'll just duplicate this. We'll do X here, O here, and keep that as X. And then this one, uh, let's do null O comma X. So we have our game board, which is stored in a single array, but we may want other information about the game itself. And if we were storing, or if we were trying to represent an entire tic-tac-toe game in one object or in one variable, we could put this in an object. We could do something like this. We have an object, we would track player one, and we could give him a name. Let's say player one is my cat blue, player two is my other cat, who doesn't really have a name, I call her Muffins. And then we'll also have the game board, so we could do board and paste that in there. And then let's make this into a variable, const game equals, I'll save, my board gets kind of messed up formatting because of my preferences for VS Code. This isn't long enough to trigger three separate lines, but that doesn't really matter. So now we have a little more information about player, player one, player two, and the board. But then looking at this, we might want more information about each player. How do we know who is O and who is X? So for player one, instead of just storing a name, we could make that an object. And the object could have username as a key. And then what would we call that X or O? Um, character, what, what do you call that? Team, let's go with playing as. And blue will be X. And then we could do the same thing for player two. So player two becomes an object where we have username and then we have playing as O. And we have to make sure we add those commas correctly. So when we take objects and arrays, we put them together, we can model most of the information and the data we need to for any given application. 
usually by nesting and sometimes it gets a little crazy with the nesting but just those two structures really give us a lot of flexibility.